Hey everybody out there, this is FD. And on this episode of Candid Conversations, we're sitting down with a giant in a hobby, Anthony Devine, Divine Warrior Brands. I can't tell you how much I've wanted to meet him, sit down and talk to him, understand his story. And with this channel, we were able to meet him at the National, sit down and learn more about him. And G and I wanted to bring this story to you. Because this is a person I think everyone should really know. Because of his history in the, in the industry, his history with collecting cars, his travel of the entire country, how many people that he meets, and his influence in what is going on. And I really wanted to showcase the work that he's doing with youth and training them and educating them fiscally on what's going on in the hobby and how they can collect and how it can benefit them in the long run. So I can't wait to show you this. I we won't over talk this. Please check this out. This is a great individual to learn more about. So, G, turn it down. Jordan is the GOAT, period. So, what's up with Russell here Westbrook about? in the playoffs? Let's talk about Are that. you trying to tell me that Steph Curry is not top 10 all the time? Hank Aaron, he's a giant. Who is Bo Bo? LeBron over here talking about he's seeing three of everything? Come on, man. This is Candid Conversation with FD. I've always wanted to meet Divine Warrior. Alright guys, let's get those hands clean. We got more how you doing now? How you doing, bro? We got more coming. Let's get those hands clean, everyone. Come on in, come in the booth. Let's find out. I'm about to check out yeah. here. I've been waiting on this for a long time. Come on in the chair. How you doing? I'm Anthony Divine. Brother. Which company? IWFD. Oh, I, I just have a vlog show. Oh yeah, oh, okay. But I'll follow you on uh, Instagram okay. for a long time. I admire what you do in the community, I admire what you do with the kids. From Chicago, right? This is my home, baby. That's right. It's my home. It's my home. So I already know a little bit about you, but I wanted to know, learn more. Like how, how you got in the hobby? Well, I put a, I put a post up yesterday that said uh, when I was when I was seven, we moved to 101st of Princeton. Oh, wow. And and we moved from uh, we lived on the West Side, younger. Okay. And then we moved to 55th and Garfield. Yeah. Uh, right between uh, Halston and Ashland. Yeah. That's my cousin Chip. They live there too. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I mean, that my, where, where my mom moved, her mom moved pretty much, and they uh -huh. were they were blocks apart. You know, uh -huh. my mom and her mom were like were like that. To my mom passed, they were like that. Okay, uh, so they stayed close, and then we moved to 101st in Princeton, and we moved in there, and that was my last home before I went to the service. So, like I say, I didn't know about collecting as a kid. No one brought this to me as a kid. Uh -huh. um, I used to go to the store. And my mama sent me a story. When I when I got the change back, we talked about 1971, 72, there was a lot of silver coins at that point, right? Yeah, yeah. So the guy would, would say, here's your change, and they make this weird sound. I'm like, they got, I'm like, excuse me, why, why why this weird sound? He said, well, you know, he said, oh, that's silver. And he explained to me silver and blah, and blah. So I tried to collect them as a kid. I tried to collect the coins. He told me they were valuable. So I said, okay, cool. So I tried to collect them. I tried to you know, put them in a drawer. I put them in a drawer. My mom take them out of the drawer, yeah. and she spends them on. That's right. My mom is that too. You feel me? Yeah. I tried to collect cards, uh -huh. collect cards, coins. She said, "That's all the bread." That's right. That's <laughs> why it's a family, right? That's right. So I, I could be mad as I ate my bread, right? <laughs> <laughs> true that. True that. <laughs> well, I was a little mad, but I could be mad, right? That's right. So okay. So fast forward, I got the cards in 1998, 97. Oh. I was yes, I was so. Long story short, after all that, no cards, nothing. No one brought it to my neighborhood. Okay. On 101st of Princeton, no one brought cards to me. No one said, here's a pack. No one brought none. There, there wasn't a program like this when I was a kid. How old are you? I'm 46. So there, there wasn't, other than the Boys and Girls Club, there wasn't really programs, right? Sure. Boys and Girls Club, Boy Scout, that's what sure. right? Yeah. There wasn't programs like Bill Chicago, Wyman, that, that really take you know, inner city kids in and, and do programs with them. Those did not exist. That's right. Okay. They exist now, and I love this program, and I love working with these programs. I can tell the passion, yeah. Yeah, so, so you got a guy in 97 dating a young lady. She had a dream set on her TV set. And I was like, what the heck is that? She said, that's a dream set. The lab, it's a little dream set, it's a little clay, yeah. white horse ceramic thing. Yeah. I was like, that thing is ugly. She said, well, that ugly thing worth $2,000. Change of perspective. <laughs> Okay, I've gone to people's houses 
as a, my whole life. You see the porcelain figures, the ceramic, and to me, coming from the hood, they were just things that people houses. I never knew those things had value. So I instantly start seeing collectibles and things from a different perspective. I started saying, she was like, I said, tell me more. She said, well, that, would have that, would, that was worth $2,000. She goes, that one here is not retired yet. It's still in production. And it's worth about $600. And when that one expired, uh, uh, it get retired, they don't make any more, it's gonna go up in value too. I was like, wow. And I said to her, I said, I wanna collect something. Now I knew it wasn't gonna be dreams. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know what you mean. I said, open the door for you. I said, I wanna collect something. I want something for if I have kids later on in life, I wanna give my kids something. And if I don't have kids later on in life, I wanna leave something for my nieces and nephews. Yeah. That we I did that girl for four months. That four month period of my life, from January to like say May, dating that girl changed my life. It got me into collecting. A four month relationship. So that was my chance. I'm their chance. So that opportunity that presented itself to me changed my life. I started into the sports. I, I, I ventured, I ventured, I ventured. I said, I know what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do things. I'm gonna do sports card. Remember, I didn't know sports card. I just I watch, I watch sports. I enjoy sports. So it was easy. It was like a light went on in me, man. And I said, I want to collect. I want to collect for me. And I want to collect for my future kids, or possibly my, my niece and nephew. And that is what got me to collect. Uh, I did it part time, January 4th, 2000. I did it full time. We're going to fast forward. I was at an industry summit. The industry summit is the one they have, uh, in, they had in Vegas all the company together, yeah. top of it, all, all of them together. Uh, Chris Carlin, up in that, came to me at one of the summits and said, I want to ask you a question. He said, what's that? He said, how come blacks don't collect? I've got to ask that question. Many times. You feel me, right? Many times. You, you feel me. Then you feel what I'm saying, right? We okay. walk these shows. Yes. Okay. But well, here's the thing about it. Brother, what I'm seeing now, I'm seeing a percentage of blacks touching now more so than I've seen yes, 10 sir. years ago. Yes, I mean, this is yes, it's, it's, it's a, just in 10 year window. Yes. Okay? Yes. So, in that 10 year window, I'm seeing more and more and more. But 10 years ago, when I went to the summit, and I was... I was the only black person at that summit that was not an athlete. I know you were. This, this, no, no. I'm That's talking about all the exhibitors, mm -hmm. not, not this, all the all the, the stores, the, the the travelers, the car people. I was the only black person for probably about seven years at that at, at that summit. Yeah. So he came to me and said, "How come blacks do not collect?" I, and I, I paused a minute and I said, "What else do you want?" <laughs> he like you didn't expect that, right? Like yeah. what else? Do you, that's it. You want the you want the answer? Do you want to hear? Do you want to hear the real answer? He said, I want to hear a real answer. I said, I said, what are you guys doing for? What do you mean? Oh, we send out these to, to the schools and take photos with them. I go, but that, that didn't teach them to collect. That's teaching them to say, that's teaching them to like Ivory Iverson. That's teaching them to like Tracy McGrady. That's teaching them to like an athlete. Because an athlete came to their school and took a put an arm around them and took a photo or took a shot of shot. Let's get into like an athlete. That don't teach them this business. I said, you guys are not teaching them this business. I said, I got an easy way for you guys to teach you guys a business. He was like, what's that? Have that same athlete that has more power than you and I can ever have. Because I had two athletes come by yesterday. These kids were done with me, they watched the athlete. How did YouTube guy come by yesterday? They were done with me, they were all with that YouTube guy. So I said, there are people way more powerful than me that have a connection that I can never have that how about give that guy a pack and have that hand that pack to that kid. Now you got a kid double hooked. You got them in all of the athlete, and they got a pack to open. Opening that pack is magical, man. It is. It's magical. You don't know what you're gonna see. You know what you're gonna see? It's it's magical. Yeah. I, my first pack is a 35 year old man. I was a 10 year old kid. I I became. I had a pack. I opened it. I didn't know what I was gonna get. It's like that guinea thing. That guinea thing. What what I got? I hand the cart back to the guy. The guy go. You got blah blah blah. You know you, you did good. I did. I did. I was a 10 year old kid. So. I thought about my first experience opening packs at 35. I thought about Chris Carlin asking me how come blacks don't collect. I thought about my answer to him saying, because you guys not doing your job. I stood up at that same summit. There was Southern Hobby, Tops, I think Benini, 
they're all in that booth, they all that talk, they're talking about the hobby, talking about what they're doing for collector, they talk about what they're doing for the industry. And I stood up and I said, and then some said, they go, any more questions? I had to get my courage up, brother. I got my courage up. I, I, I put my hand up. And I said, I said, how come you guys don't do anything for black collectors? Oh, that wasn't a question they asked him. But it was. It was. So, the Southern Harvey guy was like, I don't want to answer it. <laughs> yeah. The yeah. other guy was like, I don't want to answer it. So finally, the guy from the top, his name was John something at that time. He started, he was trying to talk. He was trying to fumble through that question. And at, at the end of it, that gentleman from the top came to me and said, you embarrassed me. I said, okay. If I, I embarrass you because you don't have an answer for me. I didn't embarrass you because I, I didn't embarrass you because because I was wrong with my asking. Asking. So here is what happened. I left that summit and I said, "It's not their job. It's my job. It's my job to do what I asked them to do. If they're not willing to do it, I got to do it. I, I, I didn't have the money to do it properly, so I didn't I didn't get to get it to become all of this. So I started small. This is my cousin Lori. 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 I, I started, when I started traveling, I travel for a living. I, I fly 120,000 miles a year, okay? Yeah. So, when I travel, my, every hotel I go to, I take my shampoos and soap, and I put them in a box, and I bring them home, and I get a, I get one or two big boxes up, and then I take them to the Boys and Girls Club, I take them to an outreach center, I take them to a women's center, and I start giving back within my abilities, okay? As my abilities get stronger, I start giving back better. I started taking packs to facilities and said, Here, here's what I can do with my limited funds, okay? All this time, I'm hoping my industry would maybe do a feature of it. Because if they did a feature of it, my job gets easier. The people, everyone walks past and goes, what's going on? I tell them, they go, oh my God, this is awesome. Can we help? If they do a feature, I ain't got to beg my help. The help won't come, okay? So, I'm, I'm sorry for being long with you. No, no, I want you to be long with okay. I want to hear your story. Okay. So, I started, as I started getting strong and better, I started doing more and more. So as I get, as I start getting stronger, and I, and, and I, I feel like I paid my dues, all the companies know me, they know me. I mean, it ain't hard to know me when you're only a black yeah. guy at an event. Yeah. Uh, and, oh, I'm gonna I'm, I'm back a little bit. At one of the summits, two shop guys did not want me there. Why is that? They, I didn't own a shop, and I traveled the country buying and selling. They go, why is he here? He don't own a shop. This is for shop owners only. So, at that time, before it became Nene, uh, and on Don Russ, uh, her, her, three or four guys came up to me and said, excuse me, they go, uh, what's your name? I said, my name is Anthony Devine. It was like, uh, so, uh, what, what, what do you do? I said, um, I said, well, I travel the country, I buy and sell sports cards, I, I, I'm here to represent all the guys, all the show guys that, because there's not a lot of show guys here. I'm, the, I'm here to represent the show guys that buy and sell sport cars because you guys don't seem to think we're important. But let me explain something to you. Once you guys sell that unit, okay, because you guys care about units, boxes of sale, that's sold. Once you guys sell that unit and people open those packs up, you don't care about what happens to the packs because your job is done. You sold units. I sell singles. So I'm important to you guys because I'm buying these singles so your guy can buy another box and open another box. So you see the cycle I'm telling you guys. So I said, you may not think I'm important to this industry, but I'm important to this industry because me and my, my unit, we, we are the ones that are keeping you guys alive because you guys are building it and making it and, and, and the people to open it and we're buying it for them so they can open more. And the guy said, oh, so you a road warrior. I said, yeah. That's where, that's where that's it came what from, name, brother. That's what the name is. I've always wondered that. Brother, it did not come from me. Everyone said, you can't self annoy yourself the road warrior. I did. Dumber said, Dumber said, oh, you look so, oh, so you a road warrior. You travel the country, you buy and sell, you do what? You a road warrior. I said, yeah, I'm a road warrior. Oh, well, back then I was, I was driving 30, 40, 50,000 miles and flying about 30, 40. So at that time, I was a road warrior. But one day, as I started flying 80, 90,000 miles and, and driving 30, I called Brian Gray, who's a friend of mine, and said, Brian, I don't want to be a road warrior anymore. And he said, he said, why? I said, I fly more than I drive. So I'm like, and I think, I think the fly warrior is stupid. <laughs> I'm like, well, 
I can't call myself a fly warrior. That's like, that don't, that don't, I said, the fly warrior don't sound right. That's right. It's just stupid. That's right. I said, the fly jock's taking already by the time I'm joining her. You know what I'm saying? I gave you the fly that's jock. That's how I'm joining her, right? right? Yep. So I'm like, I don't want to be the fly. I, I said, I don't want to be a fly warrior. I said, how about I just call myself the warrior? He said, I like that. I said, okay. That is how the road warrior became the warrior. Because I fly and drive to get my mission out. I appreciate you uh, sharing your story. But I'm from South Africa. Chicago. So that's why when I, see, when I saw your story, it is, it is, so I will always come to nationals, I'll come to shows, I did a lot with autographs. So you see the transformation, Yo, you yeah. see more and more and more people. We were just talking about this earlier today. It's, it's a very different show than what it used to be. Uh, I used to come to shows that was dominated by autographs and a little bit of cars. And now this show is really a car show. It was a lot more memorabilia, That's right. and uh, cars are growing, but cars yeah. are, it's all about cars it's now. It's all about cars. Because breakers, breakers are good for hockey. People That's don't right. like them, but they, 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 are they good really, for they, 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 they create interest. Brother, they, 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 they have done a, they have done a lot in the last 10 years for this business. Yes, yes, sir. Yes, sir. They've done a lot. Uh, the excitement they bring, the way they do it, the way they, they allow people that, they also hurt the hobby because of the way they break incrementally, okay? You get, you get $3,000 box. If you open a three thousand dollar box and you get back seven hundred dollars in product, that's a hit. That's a hit, right? That's right. That's a hard hit. But if you take a three thousand dollar box and break into ten spots or twenty spots by teams, now you make that hit way less. That's right. So when that person opens up that box and they out and they only lose a hundred, they lose sixty of the hundred or fifty of the hundred. It don't hurt the same as buying a three thousand dollar box or two thousand dollar box and losing seventy percent of your money. Okay. So what people don't realize, what breakers have done, that incremental hit is a better feeling than the whole hit. So they, they, they've done, they, they've hurt and helped. They've helped by helping offset the bet, the, the hit. They they hurt by box prices are higher now because people are taking incremental hits. That's right. If you took the whole hit, you wouldn't be paying these prices. And we ain't seen the cap to the prices. I don't think so. No, it's going to still fluctuate. It's going up and down. And, and, and I mean, look, look at flawless. Look at the price of flawless. I'm just ready to have it. A lot of these guys are hardcore gamblers. They ain't gamble like that. They had to take a 25 hour hit. Sure. 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 12,500 hit. They ain't taking that hit. Mm -hmm. No. That's true. But they'll take a 1,200 hit you on a box for a chance was $100,000 Zion. That's right. Yeah, right. What's your name again? Fabian. Fabian. I'm Anthony Fabian. What's your name, young man? It's Gregory. Gregory. Nice to meet you, Gregory. <laughs> so we started a vlog show called Roll with FD. Okay. Uh, you, you were a person that kind of inspired me to tell my story of how I got into collecting. Okay. And to be a face that probably don't see. But this is see you. This is see you too. That's what I think. I think they should hear how I think, what yeah, I'm, what I'm should, thinking But they should see you. That's right. And I'm not just black kids. Yeah. Period. You got a story to tell. That's right. And being behind the scenes is great. You tell other other stories. But you also have a story to tell. Yeah. It needs to be heard too. Yes, sir. You didn't start this. No. You got to this. So what, what, how this started for me is my father did. My father grew up in Mississippi, uh, born in 1944, wanted to collect, didn't have a fund still. So when I first came to him and said, I want an autograph, he said, well, let's go get the autograph. And back then, we used to go down the shows on 183 Park. I'm not, I'm not familiar with those. Where it says, way, so this was like 87, 88. Okay. And so much later, later on, it started right. to turn around. That's okay. right. Then everything started flipping and coming out to Rosemont. Right. So we used to go out there and get autographs and see Ernie Banks and Jim Brown and just a bunch of athletes. And it was so small at that point that you could walk right up. I remember being like. And talk to them and, and smile with them. I remember being like 13, 14 years old. I went to the back room where Ernie Banks was signing autographs. And I was able to stand there and just talk to them. So that's how this whole thing has kind of evolved and changed. And I thought, I'm sitting at home and I would be watching people talking about stuff. And I said, well, I told my girlfriend, I told G, I gotta get out and start telling my own story and meet people and bringing people that I want to bring to a larger group like yourself. So you can tell your story. Appreciate that. Like I talked to you. And I want us to have a relationship. Oh well, we, you, you follow me. I don't follow you. I'm, I'm, I don't think I don't, but I, I, I will. I promise you. At this moment, I do. I'm gonna post, I'm gonna post a picture. And, and, okay, I'm but in contact with you. yes, yes. And we're gonna do some things. Yes, sir. No, we, we're gonna do some things. We're gonna do some things for kids. Yes, sir. We're gonna build. Wonder? We're gonna build. I call these kids up until two days ago. I call them. I call them at risk, underserved, underprivileged kids. I will never use that phrase again. Who they are? Future collectors. Okay? Because they're learning. 
because see, now they, they're not at risk anymore. Don't and, they, and they're future collectors. And it's going to teach them fiscal uh, responsibility about how they manage their own. How to, how to protect the household. Uh, how to, so going to teach them things like protecting and those things. Like but I got I got these kids lose interest here, man, so I got to get I gotta get them I back into, into the Let's fold. get a quick, quick picture. Okay. I'm going to let you do your thing. That was a great conversation. I can't tell you how much joy I had in bringing that to you. Support what Mr. Devine is doing with the RISE program. He's doing a lot of great stuff for children. Send him a DM on Instagram. Get in contact with him. Just ask him a question about how you can help contribute. I plan to do the same. It is great work that he's doing. Thank you. Subscribe, like, hit the notifications button. G and I want to bring you more great content. Talk to more people in the industry because it's important. Thank you.